Saint Patrick. Everyone's heard of Saint Patrick, right? The mere mention of the name reminds us of shamrocks, green ale, and maybe even a leprechaun or two. But who was St. Patrick really? And why in the world do we reserve an entire day in his honor? Well, his story is one of the most compelling in Christian history, worthy of a blockbuster movie. It all began in Roman Britain way back in the 5th century. One day... As 16-year-old Patrick was minding his own business, a band of slave traders sprang from the shadows and took him captive, hauling him all the way back to Ireland, where he served as a shepherd for six long years. Fifth century Ireland was a rough place to live. Hundreds of chieftains ruled Ireland's warring barbarian tribes. Patrick's pagan captors were strong, passionate, and quick-tempered. They thought little about their own lives and even less about the lives of their slaves. Hunger, cold, and nakedness were his constant companions in those years. But in this difficult and lonely situation, God began to move in Patrick's heart. Though his father had been a deacon and his grandfather a priest, Patrick had never been serious about his faith. But days and nights alone on the cold countryside transformed Patrick from an irreligious youth into a holy man. His trials forged in him a strong and hearty faith, something difficult to acquire back in the comforts of Roman Britain. He wrote once of that time, I would pray constantly during the daylight hours. The love of God and the fear of him surrounded me more and more, and faith grew and the spirit was roused. So that in one day I would say as many as a hundred prayers, and after dark nearly as many again. One night, after six years of slavery, God spoke to Patrick in a dream. Your hungers are rewarded. You are going home. Look, your ship is ready. Immediately, he started for the nearest port, traveling over 200 miles on foot without being stopped. There he secured passage on a ship to Britain, another miracle for a runaway slave. After a harrowing month of travel by sea and land, Patrick made it home. He was back with his family, back in Britain, reunited with all things good and comfortable. But six years in pagan Ireland had changed Patrick. Six years of harsh slavery, six years of experiencing God's presence, sufficiency, and faithfulness. Patrick grew restless in Britain until one night he received another message from heaven. Victoricus, a man he had known in Ireland, came to him in a vision. Holding a large stack of letters, he handed one to Patrick. It read, The Voice of the Irish. Suddenly, a multitude of Irish voices called out to him. We beg you to come and walk among us once more. Deeply moved, he was unable to read further and immediately woke up from the dream. Christ continued to speak to him, and St. Patrick accepted his missionary calling as the Apostle of Ireland. Patrick received his theological training and was ordained as a bishop to the peoples of Ireland, a dangerous assignment to say the least. But the love God gave Patrick for the Irish far outweighed any concerns for safety. His humility, courage, and generosity endeared him to them, even as he boldly preached Christ and challenged injustice. Patrick translated the gospel not only into their language, but into Irish culture, showing them that the virtues they most prized found their deepest expression in Jesus Christ. St. Patrick's mission work was wildly successful. He planted churches all over Ireland and influenced every level of society. Christian monasteries became centers for study and learning. Kings and peasants were baptized, and Ireland experienced a cultural transformation like few societies in history. By the year 461, the likely year of St. Patrick's death, Ireland had seen the extinction of the slave trade, violence and tribal warring drastically reduced, and virtually a whole nation converted to Christianity. As the Roman Empire was crumbling into chaos, Ireland was experiencing a renaissance of culture and learning brought to them by the gospel of Jesus Christ and by a slave-turned-saint named Patrick. Ah.